Good morning, my friends. Good, well, it's kind of early afternoon, but whatever. I just got back from a super quick Publix and upper body bodybuilding session. Ha, huh, look at me go. Um, I have been consistently sticking with this. This is my third month because I wanna start adding different types of workouts to my app. And I just feel like I have a really large base of like CrossFit at home workouts. I've got body, um, body weight, endurance. I've got like Metcons, AMRAPs. I have a six week dumbbell program, a six week CrossFit program coming. And I'm just like, you know what? I need to tap into the isolated strength workout because it's really helping me a lot lately. I kinda wanted to talk to you guys about doing the open while uh, not doing CrossFit because that's where we are right now. And I just got back from my workout, made a pit stop. If you haven't gotten these yet, you need to try them. We're, we're chaotic. We're chaotic already in this video. <laughs> what else is new? And I am just whipping up one of my shakes, which it is getting warmer out. Today right now, you guys, it is 75 degrees and sunny. Where I used to live, big gosh, no storm. It's 1130 and I'm planning, you guys wanna go outside? I'm planning on doing this workout tonight at 5.30 or 6. And this this workout, 23.2, is, um, I don't know, it's just not like, not an amazing workout. I don't feel very excited about it. I don't feel really excited about the CrossFit Open in general this year, as I'm sure you guys probably already know. I've been taking like a pretty large step back from CrossFit these days, and I'm just doing it for fun. I didn't even register, not putting in any scores. I'm just doing it for me. Last week the gym was so packed though that I couldn't bring my tripod and I didn't want to be rude so I didn't film it. But tonight I'm gonna to try because it should be more segmented with the shuttle runs. So I wanted to kind of go over a little bit of nutrient timing, meals, post-workout shakes, what happens when you're training at a different time than normal and things like that. Because I just did a little bit of accessory work and nothing crazy, I just had a protein shake now. I had my regular breakfast, I'll show you right here, with oatmeal and eggs, nothing out of the ordinary for me. But instead of having my lunchtime around like 12.30 or one o'clock like I normally do, and then having like a big span of, you know, a few hours before doing the workout, I'm actually gonna choose to have my lunch a little bit later, so maybe like around two or 2.30. It's just a lot on my stomach and a lot on your digestive system, and I don't wanna have anything sitting in my stomach. And this is also not one of those workouts where I feel like you need a ton of energy right beforehand. It's a very mentally tough type of workout, right? Like you're not doing something where you're doing a lot of heavy barbell cycling or even last week's workout I would say could probably benefit from, I had like a banana beforehand. Um, but when it comes to something like this, I'm gonna kind of go the opposite route and make sure that I'm fueled for the entire day. And we're just gonna make sure that I'm hydrated and fueled for the hours beforehand. And then when I go into this workout, um, I'm gonna make sure that there's not a lot sitting in my stomach. So. I have a little bit more time to just hang out here. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. I will um, probably do some more check-ins. Oh, we're laying, rolling in the grass, great. And then I will show you what we're eating for lunch and take you along for the workout tonight. And it's 3.30 right now. So what I am having now is a uh, zero fat Greek yogurt mixed with Cool Whip because it just tastes better that way. <laughs> and then a Honeycrisp apple, some blueberries, and some Trader Joe's Jojo granola. Absolute fire, you need this in your life. From now until 5.45ish, nothing. Nothing but water. <laughs> Why? Because this is a workout where you're gonna be up and down, up and down, burpees, pull-ups, burpees, pull-ups, back and forth, running, back and forth, touching the ground. Recipe for vomit, okay? I guarantee you someone's gonna throw up on this workout. I just feel like having the lightest amount of things possible in my body would be best. And also just making sure that I am not eating too high of fat content beforehand because it slows the digestion down of carbohydrates. And shocking, I have a video on that on my channel as well for pre and post workout nutrition. If you haven't ever seen the playlist on my channel of educational nutrition videos, it's pretty much a playlist compiled of all the questions I get asked as a nutrition coach constantly. So if you have a question, check out that playlist first. Um, but 
I'm really hoping I can document this workout for you guys tonight because I really want you to be able to see it. I want to show you how I've just been tackling these workouts even with not training for CrossFit right now. So I'm going to eat this. I'm going to take the dogs on a WLK. And I'll do that. Barbell and all that must be off of the runway to get in the run area. If you are going in heat too, while they are doing the workout, make sure you're warming up the thrusters, all that stuff. That way when they're doing the thrusters, you're resting, doing any last minute stuff before it's your turn to go. Because we're going to move through today, heat one, heat two, and all that. So if you're going to heat two, make sure you're warming up now. Heat one, you got a couple minutes. All right? You, you fucking tell them. Let's go. You tell them, baby. Woo! All right, let's talk about this workout while you watch incredibly boring footage of burpee pull-ups and running back and forth. So this workout, in my opinion, I think, like I said earlier in the video, is more of a mental workout than anything. I did not feel like the burpee pull-ups were as taxing on me as I thought they were going to be, but I did notice a lot of athletes, when their chin would go over the bar, they were kind of like slowly doing a negative almost, like a pull-up, but then hanging on for a second and lowering themselves down. The strategy that I found being helpful was jumping as high as possible and then just letting go immediately as soon as my chin went over the bar. So I went out the gate here a little bit too hot and I realized that maybe about like a minute in. I was like, all right, I got to slow my pace down because I knew there was no way that I was going to be able to keep that up for the entire 15 minute duration. So essentially my plan was to just not stop moving on the burpees. I almost forgot that I had one more to go there. <laughs> Uh, one more set. I was counting one and down like separately and it was supposed to be down and back as one. So I got a little tripped up there. But my plan throughout the entire duration of the workout was to keep my burpee pull-ups as consistent and not stop. So basically I was just using the run as like a little bit of a recovery and picking it up every round where I could, but I just tried to keep the burpee pull-ups very consistent. And I was really proud of myself, honestly, for being able to stick to that because the main goal that I had was to get into the round of 30, and that's what I did. So both open workouts so far, I did my goal plus a little bit more, and I really just am satisfied with that. You know, like I said, I've been training CrossFit one time a week, and I think, if anything, the strength that I've been focusing on lately was what helped me here because my arms weren't really that tired, my back felt really good, my legs felt strong during the thruster, and I just think that this was more like my breathing. My throat was really hurting. It just, this workout gave me major Fran lung. Uh, but other than that, I really felt like I was able to keep a super solid pace and I didn't take a ton of unnecessary breaks on the burpee pull-ups. I just tried to stay as calm as possible and I tried to jump as high as I could where like if you watch Alyssa next to me, that burpee pull-up that she just did, she was doing more of a strict pull-up where I was kind of like jumping as high as possible and then giving myself that little kick at the end with my feet to get my chin over the bar. So that worked really well for me. And then I just wanted to make sure that my runs were staying consistent each round and they did. So I'm not going to make you watch the entire 15 minute duration of this because it is really boring and I would not redo this workout again. Even if I like made it to the top 10%, I would not care because it sucked and it was boring. So let's move forward. All right. So here we have the end of the workout, which as you can see, <laughs> the pace of the shuttle runs definitely significantly decreased. <laughs> um, but I was feeling kind of dizzy because as I'm watching this footage back now, I understand I was running in a circle essentially instead of like pivoting back and forth. <laughs> pivot, pivot. Uh, I was doing a circle and I do that in my burpee box jump overs as well. And I always get nauseous. And that is why my friends, I did not want to have a big meal pre doing this workout. And actually I got more than five here. So I was not accurate in my original statement about five burpees into the 30 here. This is the round of 30 and I'm definitely doing more than five. So, uh, by the way, Miranda coming in hot with the awesome photography skills here. I am so proud of her. Just going to give her a quick shout out because she is so talented at stuff like this. She's very artsy and we started a media page called Manders Media. And any pictures that you've been seeing of me, the one that's on this thumbnail of this video, she's been taking them. So, you know, shout out to my girl being super artsy and, you know, just really good with the Sony. Anyways, uh, the burpees, burpee pull-ups here, I actually was doing a mixed grip on some of them because that was where I started feeling like I was just not, I didn't want to chance any no reps here. So then, you know, it collapsed and died. Alyssa and I, we were pretty close there. Um, I think I beat her just by a couple of reps. So that was exciting. And then Cody rolled up my bar. I'm so excited. At least you're going to get to see a few of these reps. I don't think my 165 is on here, but you're going to see the reps leading up to it. 
So I decided that I was gonna change shoes really quickly and I put my lifting shoes on. And initially I believed that this was 145 here on the bar and you can't really tell on this uh, clip, but it was super lopsided and I was a little confused. And that is because there is a 15 on there and I did not know. So my first rep should have been 145 and it was actually 150. So then I go ahead and add uh, five pounds on each side and there's Cody looking at it like, um, this is not right. What are you doing here? I think you're incorrect, ma'am. There's a 15. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. <laughs> so then I took that off and Cody ran and grabbed me a 10. So I really hit 150 first, not 145. But then we swapped it out and it was good. And then we went for the 155 next. And then I went uh, 55, 65 and the memory ran out on my memory card. So that lift is not here, but uh, the pictures of it were really cool. So love that for me. And I also really just love that I went into this with no expectation that I was going to be able to hit it and I exceeded my goal. So I'm really happy about that. And I thought it was a good lift. I'm really sad that it wasn't on recording, but uh, take my word for it. It was good. <laughs> I love that it cuts off right as I'm about to do this one too. Like we love that. Oh God. It is the next morning. When I got back from 23.2, I had a big old stack of Kodiak pancakes with an egg in the batter and a couple dark chocolate chips. And then I went to bed like two hours after that. Obviously this is a different training time for me. So I didn't want to have like a meal that late at night. I don't typically eat that late at night. And that's really what us as coaches try to make sure our clients follow when they're doing things out of their routine, that they try to keep everything else as normal as as possible so if you're not someone who typically works out at six or seven o'clock at night just be prepared to have that kind of like weird digestive reaction to some type of things you might feel a little off the next day uh, but just try to keep things as normal as possible to recap this workout i am so pissed because I thought I had the 128 gigabyte memory card in my camera and i did not and after the entire 15 minute amrap uh, the workout, my, my memory card ran out of memory. So I was not able to show you my 165 thruster, which I'm, I have a picture of it. It looks great. Um, but I didn't get it on film and I'm really sad about that because it was unexpected PR for me. My old thruster PR, I think was like 150 or 155. So to be able to PR my thruster after something like that is really exciting and I'm happy with it. A couple of things with, um, planning your day out around a high intensity workout like that, right? So you saw my pre-workout snack was a little bit more small, dense, obviously heavy on the protein and carbs with very minimal fat. And the kind of same thing goes for the meal after that. If you have a protein shake, that would be super awesome. Um, if you do wanna eat a meal, that's totally fine too. But again, just make sure that your fats are not really high so that your body's able to process and digest those carbohydrates to refuel your glycogen stores. Now, along with these workouts, you have to also keep in mind that the actual amount of time that you are spending in that high intensity, like adrenaline bump in, like grind and workout is really 15 minutes. So we don't necessarily need to change our entire week for this. The outlier to that would be if you are someone training to go to the CrossFit Games. However, like I always say, my videos are geared more towards the average Joe like myself. So I am not suggesting that any of my clients or myself go out and change your entire nutrition for the week. Just keep it as is. So that is what I did. I just did some walking on an incline this morning, a little stretching, a little bit of core, uh, and then I'm gonna rest tomorrow completely and start back up my regular training on Monday. So I really hope that I'm able to film this last one like for real, the entire thing, and not have my camera battery die or my memory card run out of memory because that now one of each has happened to me. So, anyways, that's it for this little video. I hope that you enjoyed. Let me know if you're doing the CrossFit Open workouts. I'm really excited to see how you guys are doing. And as always, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you in next week's video.